Hello, it's me Jess. Welcome to my channel. I'm here with another channeled message. This is a specific message. It might resonate with you. It might not. Okay, so this message is coming through for a particular kind of person. And I just heard, don't play with me. You know that you are this kind of person because it's like this group here you have some kind of get out of jail free card and you know it. And I think it's different for everybody that's drawn in here, but you know exactly what it is because it's like there's something about you or something that you have or that you've accomplished that is like great or dazzling or astounding or something like that and it works and you know it works, okay? And so maybe some of you are rich, maybe some of you are charming, maybe some of you are gorgeous, maybe some of you are witty or you're very clever or I don't know, it's something. And I'm hearing you say like, I do, I, I know just how to play it with people in order to get what it is that I want out of the situation. And even as I'm sitting here telling you this, cause I'm kind of calling you out on it. I'm still seeing you in my mind, kind of like wink and nod, like, like, you know, you know that you do it. Um, and I don't know, it's almost like, even if you get called out, you expect to be forgiven or you expect for it to still go through, or you expect for it to be okay. And I feel like you've had a, an interlude or an encounter here with a particular individual where it just didn't fly. It just didn't work. And this is actually a very divine process. And I think you can see that. I hope you can see that. That's what your guides are trying to get across to you because it didn't work with this individual. And I feel like whatever happened here, because it's like, it's like whatever this is that you use, um, that you know that, that you have, that other people kind of give you this pass if you play it right. What it's done, it's established like, I'm hearing a new normal. It's established some kind of baseline of behavior, um, especially in relationships with other people. You know, it's like, things that you expect in relationships, how you expect to be treated, how you think things are gonna kind of go. But the normal for you, and it is, it's pretty stable because of, of who you are or what this is that you have or what it is that you do. Um, it's, it's pretty stable in this like baseline you've established for yourself. But the thing about it is that it's absolutely abnormal. Like it's, it's not at all normal in terms of like life treatment. And I'm hearing that quote that says, when you're used to like deferential treatment, then being treated fairly actually feels unfair to you. And I feel like that's exactly the situation that happened between you and this other person. It's, it's like you were treated extremely fairly, but you're not used to that. And I feel like it started spinning your wheels in your head. And I think you couldn't understand it. Like, why isn't it working? And you, I think, thought that it had to be because of some nefarious intent or some kind of character. Like, you immediately looked for what was wrong with this person. And... I'm also hearing like an engine revving, like vroom, vroom. So um, I'm hearing when, when this occurred and you were actually treated very fairly here, and that was like in conversation or in regards of a decision here, it's like your heart was weighed, but it was, it was not, um, for once the scales weren't weighted in your favor because of something here. And that is because this person doesn't care about it. Like they know, they see whatever this is that you have. They know that you're rich. They know that you're powerful. They know that you're charming. They know that you're handsome. They know that you're cute. Like whatever this is, they know that they just don't give a shit about it. This person wants to be treated fairly. And I do think that, um, your adults listening to this. So whatever this is, um, I'm hearing don't slither out of this. Don't like let yourself out of this because you're an adult now. And so it doesn't take much effort for you to kind of deploy this thing in whatever way, um, you're still deploying it because you're trying to weight the scales in your favor in order to actually, you know, be very selfish with people and get what you want out of a situation and not always to give somebody else what they deserve or, um, and, and you know it. And I don't think you necessarily think about it like that. I think that you're just so used. It's, you, it's such, it's been such smooth sailing with you that maybe you haven't had to think much about the morality of what you do or um, think about, uh, really think about what it might mean for another person to be treated. You know, it's, um, and, and it's caused this, and that on a divine level is what this was supposed to do. It's, it's supposed to get you processing and it's supposed to get you on a deeper level. And that's that wheels spinning kind of thing. And I'm still seeing the wheels spin. And actually this is a very apt metaphor because it's a, it's a race car wheel that I'm seeing. Okay. And I'm actually hearing race cars now, like again, that revving their engine. So I think when this happened, it's like your, your wheels were spinning, but it was in this maneuvering kind of way. And you were, you felt like you'd been outdone. You feel like this person bested you and they didn't set out to best you. 
you know, or, or you feel like they take, they took something away from you that you felt entitled to. And in reality, you had no right to feel entitled to it. Yeah. You're used to getting what you want, but in reality, that's just because of that normal situation that you're used to, but it's absolutely not normal. And you absolutely were not entitled to whatever, um, this person denied you or whatever result you wanted. None of that was true. So you felt that you had been wronged when you hadn't, you hadn't been wronged. And this is the problem. Okay. This is part of the problem because this is a functioning, dysfunctioning, uh, functioning dysfunction situation. But it's hard for you to see the reality of that a because you keep yourself very distracted and I'm about to go into that um in, in just a second B because you have a rubric where by you judge your success or not success that's off and needs to be adjusted and um, There was a, a third one that I can't remember right now <laughs> um, but uh yeah, this, it was some kind of unfair treatment, but um, that wheel that I'm spinning, right? Like it's a race car wheel and I'm hearing like the race car um, engines revving. So I think maybe you wanted to compete with this person. And that's for some reason, this is how um, you're used to handling situations. And now I'm seeing that scene from Greece where um, Danny Zuko, <laughs> I can't remember these people, and um, Kaniki were going to race their cars down that one drag. And it's like, we're racing for papers, you know, like, I don't know <laughs> if it, it feels like that, like that's like, let's take it to the track, right? Like, and that's the way that you're used to dealing with situations. And I'm hearing like one track mine, but I'm also hearing like one trick pony. Like this is the one way that you have to, that you always go to, to solve it because all, um, it's uh, on this particular track that's how you win. Okay. Cause there's an addiction from you on staying on some kind of superficial level. And that does have to do with whatever superficial thing that you always leverage with great skill, um, to not have to go deeper or to not have to expand yourself out in other areas where you might have a weak, you know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunate because you should be using this. You could use this. Let me say that, um, to be an advocate for people or to negotiate deals for other people. But instead you're just using this very selfishly. And that's part of the problem your guides have with you and that they're trying to like shake you awake. And maybe this person, um, is demonstrating that here for you as well, or there'll be another person that's meant to demonstrate because, um, I do think for some of you, this person has the same thing. I don't know if you know it or not, but this person looked however they needed to look to you, or they came in, um, in whatever way they needed to, to kind of shock you awake. But I'm hearing the word small. There was something you judged about this person as being small. They could physically be small. They could be younger than you. There's something that maybe you thought, um, you had more of than them, but for some of you, it's like they have the same stuff you do. They're also handsome or they're also beautiful. They're also charming. They're witty. So they're actually pretty toe to toe with you. I don't know why you didn't see it, but again, it's because, um, you're so used to maneuvering and that in and of itself, that way of thinking, it's a very shallow way of thinking. Okay. It is shallow. It's not actually just because you're thinking doesn't mean that you're doing it. I'm not trying to insult you. Okay. But just because you're thinking doesn't mean that you're doing it well. And it doesn't mean that you're reflecting and it doesn't mean that you're doing it deeply because I can see in this situation where, um, this person kind of threw a spoke in your wheel in this metaphor that I'm trying to get to, but can never get to. Um, but they threw a spoke in your wheel, but it's like you went over the same things that you always go over. The only things that you know, when the way to understand this person is because this person is actually big. They're big in some way that you don't understand. There's a depth to this person. Okay. So going back to this race car metaphor, race cars, race on a racetrack. Okay. And only a racetrack. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you're trying to pull this into your arena because that's the only place where a race car is even practical. Race cars can't drive even on like regular roads. I know that there's like, um, street racing and everything, but I think they have different kind of tires, but like the race car I'm seeing and I'm um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is like the way I'm divinating this message. But I think race cars don't, they don't have deep tread. I'm pretty sure. And that helps them to go fast um, because they don't need that deep tread because um, they're going to sweep the track for rocks and, you know, things like that, that a tire would need tread in order to navigate. Well, those rocks and the weather, the inclement weather and stuff, that's life. You know, that's real life. So it's like you've cultivated by using whatever this is, you've cultivated this track and you just drive the same loop over and over and over. And it is this dopamine rush because think about driving a race car. I mean, they're going fast. There's cars all around you. Like there is this, it's highly distracting. And the sounds, like I'm hearing the sounds, this is highly, highly distracting. And I just heard like, you think you're cool and you think you're winning. Remember I told you there's a rubric here about success and winning that needs to be um, altered here because the reality is that you drive the same circle over and over and over again. And so at some point it's going to be bored. Like you're going to be bored. You're driving the same circle. There's like other roads. There's like entire different continents you could go on, but you're not doing that because this is, you feel like you win here. And that's why it's a functioning dysfunction. You're over relying on it. So you don't take risks. And for some that's, that was, um, 
for some that could have been a, a component here in your journey with this person, whatever happened, like in this conversation, or you needed to take a risk and you needed to get into some part of yourself that's deeper actually. Um, and that feels risky to you. And you know what that is? Cause you have a thing with boredom, I think, but you had, that was risk. You like risk, you respond to risk. So there's a healthy risk that actually comes with this person where it's like, okay, I gotta, I gotta get into other parts of myself here. And I feel you're actually like nervous or you're actually, um, you're engaged more fully. And some of you knew that like lucidly interacting with this person, you could feel that and you were on the precipice of something. So for some, there was this sense of like excitement or that things were going places. And you might've even felt that intuitively because this is a person that is, that has depth. Okay. Cause this race car thing, it's like you're addicted to being on this superficial level because that's where you win. That's how you can, this is a control issue with you. This is how you control. This is how you maneuver. And you're um, used to being around. I, some of you cultivate a crowd full of yes men, um, or it's just a natural function of, it's like the people that are around you are, it's like they're buying the tickets to the racetrack. They're so enamored by like the race cars or whatever. And so you have these people around you that let you get away with these things. They are yes people. Um, because they're so, they, they're so concerned with like whatever that is that you bring to the table. But the reality is because you think this person bested you and they don't think that they bested you at all. Okay. You have very different outlook here, like with this person and they have so much to teach you is what I'm hearing. They have so much to show you. And, um, you really could have left this arena and they're zooming out of like the racetrack now. And now it just looks like a kiddie pool to me that like, and that was in part like the message that this person was meant to deliver. And I'm seeing now, um, what's that person that has to deliver like court papers, you know, um, served. It's like you got served, but this is on some kind of like cosmic level where this person was actually able to get in. They were able to get on the, the racetrack with you because of who they are. Because remember, I told you this person's big in a way that you don't understand. Like they're actually special. I just heard they're special. This is a very special person and you couldn't see that. Or maybe you did see that, but you, you, you could only, you could only, I, I'm seeing like a faint, like sparkle around this person. And it's like, you didn't know what it was or what it was coming from. Um, I don't know what this was, but it's like this person was able to serve you this message. And the message is some kind of hard look in the mirror where it's like, you're not cool for doing this. Okay. You're not winning by doing this. You're actually scared. You stay in the shallow end. This is actually the shallow end. And not only that, but it takes an immense amount of energy from you to stay doing this because, you know, race drivers, it seems like, oh, they're just driving a car, you know, like around, around big whoop. I drive a car every single day. Like he just does it faster than me. No, the G's like the G forces that these drivers have to like withstand. They have to do special exercises for like their necks and stuff. Their heart rates are like up for hours at a time. It's crazy hard on your physical body. And so it's like, you are exerting so much energy to stay in the shallow end. And it's not, you're not cool, you know? And I think again, like you're around other race cars and stuff and you feel like this is cool and you feel like this is maneuvering or winning. But the mirror that this person had to show you is that, uh, I'm just gonna say it, I'm gonna say it hard, okay? It's not cool and you're a coward for doing it. Like that's all this is. And um, something here didn't work with this person. And it really just is because you have to pull someone into your game in order for it to be a game. So it's like, for, I'm hearing shadow boxing the other half. like. Like some of you, it's like you were the only person competing. You were the only person maneuvering. You were only the only person playing a game here. And you need to understand that. Cause it's like, you could only understand because you've been in the kiddie pool for so long. You could only understand this person through like noodles and floaties. But in the adult pool, there's like other things going on. And it's like six feet deep. Some places you can't even touch the bottom. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a different, you didn't have the lens. You didn't have the right lens to understand this person. So you could only make sense of them through this kind of shallow surface level lens, which is you, I didn't get what I wanted out of you. And I'm so used to getting what I want, even though logically in my mind, I understand that sometimes um, you don't get what you want and people do make their own choices. I think logically you understand this stuff. You're just, your, your baseline, what you've come to expect from other people is off. It's wrong. And you have the wrong people around you, to be honest, um, that, that are not challenging you. And that's why you're bored and you will be bored because you're driving around the same circle. And again, I think it takes a lot out of you to do it, but the way to not be bored is to go with this person. They're going to, cause you have explored the horizontal dimension, right? That's that superficiality. You've done it to agnosium. Um, this is a, just a functioning dysfunction. Um, but now you need to explore the vertical. 
and there's depth here and there's depth and whether you knew it or not there's a deep connection here this is and some of you don't you legitimately don't know it and i don't i don't mean that as an insult or anything some of you legitimately you haven't gone poking around on that depth level enough to know that this is like a deep soulmate of yours this is somebody you have immense chemistry with this is somebody you really could have gone the distance with they have so much to show you and it's in that way that you would never be bored you know because it's always new and it's always fresh because it's places that you haven't explored. But I think you like staying in an arena where you know you're comfortable with and it's like you know it inside and out. And it's the same loop, but it's your loop. And um, you know, you know what to expect and you're the expert or you're the, you know, and it's not because there's expert energy here. It's because you have you've you will only stay in this one place where you are familiar with instead of like exploring so it's funny because i actually think there's like a boredom thing and a dopamine thing um but there's actually not an adventurous spirit here and maybe for some you thought there's something about like okay well this is a subaru like you're you're a you're a race car and maybe you thought this was a subaru like this was a safe choice or something but actually it's like this person has four wheel drive they actually go um there's an adventurous spirit here they're the one with the adventurous spirit actually and some of you are going to learn that or or that's what you didn't understand here as well. Um, but it's like a, a beautiful adventurous spirit. Yours, you're mistaking the spirit of competition for the spirit of adventure. Um, and it has to do with boredom. It's because you attribute adventure to a lack of boredom. But your version of a lack of boredom is really competition and dopamine. So for some, because I'm hearing that Stacey O'Rico song, it's like there's got to be more to life than chasing out every temporary high to satisfy me. So it's like you go from one high to the next high. And honestly, it's like a very empty way to live. And if you feel like your life doesn't have meaning or something, like, you know, that's why it's because you have to explore that like deeper vertical dimension. But this person also doesn't like boredom, um, but they have depth. This is a person, this is the person who could sit alone in a room for like four days straight and be less bored than you are on the, the racetrack. And they could teach you how to do it, you know? Um, and it would be fascinating to you, you know, that, and I'm just seeing you holding hands and like swinging on the swing set and stuff, like whatever kind of relationship this is, or it was supposed to be for you, whether it's friendship or, um, family or romantic or professional, whatever this is, it's like, um, and again, I'm hearing if you want to go fast, because you're Ricky Bobby in this, you want to go fast. If you want to go fast, go alone. And so you have to also understand, and I think you know this deep to your core, to be honest, that you're, you're alone in this kind of life. You know, there's only room for one in that race car. So some of you, <clears throat> it's like you want to live a life where you, you actually are alone, and that's fine. Um, but even the relationships that you get in, they don't challenge you, not in any meaningful way. And, and um, it's that competitive. You want to compete with your partner. Um, that's... No, <laughs> I don't want that. Like my partner is my partner. I'll compete with other people in an arena that it's appropriate. That's fine. It's a part of life. But partnership is a part of life too. And there's it's a different arena. And it would actually be nice for you to get some different arenas in your life. Again, that's going to help with like the boredom thing as well. But yeah, there's this like kind of I compete with my partner thing. And it's, and it's fascinating. It's exciting. And that's how I mitigate my boredom. And this person's like, or you could just have legitimate adventures. But if you want to do that, sure. Um, but me and my four wheel drive are going to go to this waterfall that I think is there, but maybe it isn't, maybe it's not. <laughs> and if I get stuck, fine. You know, um, that's like who this person is. And this is like soulmate energy to you. And, and if you want to go far, go together. It's like you could have gone a long way to this person. I don't know if it's still on the table or not. For some of you, it isn't because this person's made this decision. And after they made this decision, it's like you flicked them in the face or you, I'm seeing the seven of swords. You like snuck around them or you were trying to sabotage them or you were trying to bait them into your game still. And this person like withstood it. And your guides are kind of giving a wink and a nod here that I'm hearing it was a tall order. I'll give you that. Like you should really respect this person because it was a tall order to get somebody who legitimately does not care about whatever milk and honey you're serving. Okay. They really don't. You are going to treat them correctly. You are going to treat them like an equal. You are going to treat them fairly. You're going to demonstrate, you know how to act, or you are going to G T F O. And that is really it with them. So they're immensely fair because what you experience with this person is how life should feel. It's when you are not weighted, when you don't, um, yeah. Um, and I just heard this is going to have you looking at the people that are around you in a different way too, because this person is more than them. Like these people just tolerate, tolerate you and they're less than this person. So it's like, I think you're around karmic energies, to be honest, like not all of them, like obviously, but like a lot of them I'm hearing they're karmic because they, um, they allow you to be, to get away with stuff. They don't hold you accountable. And that is a bad thing. That's not a good thing. 
That is a bad thing. It's harming you, it's harming them. Because even if somebody's like hollering like a seal in your face, like, yay, do it again. Like, you know, um, when you like mistreat them or when you know that they're not receiving like what they could or, cause for some of you, it's like you do have something that um, you know, um, but you withhold it in some way so that you can be the one that doles it out. And for some of you, this is just time and attention. It's like, you maybe play a little game with people. Maybe that's what it is. Like, you know how to maneuver in situations where it's like, you wanna play a little game with people where it's like, well, I just might not call you for three days. And this person's like blocked, <laughs> you know? Um, Cause they're not gonna play your game. So some of you are like, how did you win my game? And this person's like, by not playing it at all. I have actually a different worldview and it's sane. <laughs> and it, it has me avoiding people that are gonna treat me like a yo-yo, you know, are gonna treat me like this. And, and that's what went on here. That's the difference. So you, you don't even have the lens to kind of understand this person, but you're starting to get it. It's, you're being asked to go deeper. You're being asked to leave the stadium. And you have to understand that, yeah, you've got a lot of karmic relationships because these people are so fascinated or they're just so wrapped up in you that they tolerate your nonsense. And it's not a good, it, even if these people can't hold you accountable, they, they can't actually go toe to toe with you in some way. This other person can, and there are other people in the world that can, is what I'm hearing. But you got to go get them. And you have to know that this is a sickness. This is a diseased way of being. This isn't good for you. Even if you think you're winning, it's not, this is like, where it requires a certain level of maturity. This requires an adult perspective, you know? I mean, yeah, I guess it's a win if you eat milk duds every night before dinner, but it's a lose as well, <laughs> you know? Like the adult sees that it's a lose, you know, in the long term. You have to see that this is a losing situation. You have to want more for yourself. And you have to want more for these people as well. You ought to respect each other enough to, to dissipate. This needs to, this needs to dissipate. Um, so that's what I have for you. Um, if that resonates, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Bye guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs>